So thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Niel Bellabarba, and we're going to be talking about the OAK. So what we're building is a smart financial assistant. The problem that we're going after is that people need more assistance with their personal finances matters. We don't have the data. We don't have the time and we don't have the ability to actually sit down, crunch the numbers and make sense of them to actually answer some very important financial questions for ourselves. Therefore, <clears throat> to a greater or lesser extent, most of us mismanage our finances from low amounts of savings to the wrong kind of credit card. We're actually very, very poor at managing our own personal finances. So what's the answer? So the answer is what we're building at The Oak. <clears throat> we're building a city for financial wellness, a personal financial assistant that's artificially intelligent, looks at your numbers, knows them better than you will ever do, and can answer some financial questions. It can also help you save, uh, set up some savings goals that are tailor-made for who you are from a financial perspective. Each, of, each one of us is very different, and therefore this tool can allow you to set up savings goals that are tailor-made for you. So what kind of questions could this artificially intelligent assistant answer? So starting off from the very basic ones, what's my balance? What's my balance on my current account and my credit card? What's the balance on my wife's current account and her credit cards? What's the family holistic balance at a click of a button, potentially on two entirely different banking systems? What can I afford at Christmas or summer holidays or other periodic expenses? Most of us don't actually do budgeting. It's a very inefficient way of planning the yearly expenses. We just have these yearly events, put it on the credit card, and then we're figuring it out a couple of months later as to why are we still paying this. So it's very inefficient. Um, can my partner and I buy a house? Well, it's a function of how much money is coming in, how much money is normally going out, how many months do you want to set up this saving goal? So the maths behind this is particularly banal, but most of us actually struggle to actually sit down and actually do the maths. Um, also, is my credit card, my phone bill, my utilities, are they good deals? Well, it's a function of how much are you paying and what are the deals that are out there. Again, it's banal, but most of us don't actually sit down and improve our own finances. It's quite bizarre. So that's really what we're going after, a tool that can help you with these very, very low-hanging fruit questions, but actually answer them to help you with your basic finances. <clears throat> so what's the tool? It's a, t it's a combination of machine learning, understand and answer the question, and then actually big data, so the ability to go out there, fetch the data and come back and apply them to each one of our personal finances. <clears throat> So what's our business model? Well, to get mass adoption, it has to be free, because that's how these tools actually get many, 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 many users, millions of users. This has to be entirely free. So how do we make money? Well, premium features. The ability to combine bank accounts on two different banking systems is very powerful, and therefore that feature would have to be paid for, a premium feature. And then special offer purchases. So if I know that you're carefully saving money away for a new version of the MacBook Pro, as you're nearly getting there, I can give you special offer discounts. These discounts can Heavy, heavy rebates. So it's a spend revenue model plus a freemium model. Where are we in this exciting phase? Well, we're on the, on the left hand side of this diagram, we're raising 180,000 pounds, of which we have actually, that's slightly out of date, we've got 100,000 confirmed. And we're going to be building the initial assistant, the roundup, an algorithmic saving, and the full savings wallet with the uh, Barclays, the custodian bank behind it. And this further phase is actually for growing the business and actually raising the bar even further. So we're planning multiple phases of f fundraising. <clears throat> These are actually the first screens of the embryo, as I call it. It's the product as it is so far. It's uh, very exciting to actually see the product to actually come into life. So if you want to see it a little bit better, come and see me later. And what's a great team to make this work? Well, you need entrepreneurship skills. So for myself, it's the second startup that I've been involved in. I'm a co-founder of an emotion detection and analysis company called Realize. Um, I've also been involved with a virtual reality training company. Very exciting business. Um, my co-founder, Lorenzo, this is his third startup. He's been involved with VoiceMap, which is a voice into artistic info video company, and Fractal Garden, which is an Italian digital media agency, uh, which actually achieved great revenues. On the advisory side, we've Okay, 30 seconds. So on the advisory side, it's very exciting to note that we have senior management from PayPal, BlackRock, and AXA investment managers on our board. Thank you very much. We'll take three questions from Nile if there are questions. Hi. 
Uh, Andrew Lockley, if I'm a potential customer of yours, I've got a choice. I could either use your slightly dull financial services app or I could just watch Netflix on my phone. What makes me want to do what you want me to do and not just sit there and watch Netflix? That's a very interesting question. I mean, the, the, the use case that we're going after is people acknowledge that actually their money isn't going that far. Their incomes and their outgoings are more or less equal and actually they notice that they're very inefficient in managing their finances. So it's going after a user base that tends to know that the way that they manage their finances is not very efficient. I mean, watching Netflix will be considerably more entertaining, but this app will actually save you money. So it depends what kind of mindset you're in at that moment, I suppose. Alistair Wilson-Goff, I'm interested in your model, the freemium versus the targeting expenditure. What's your reach on that? What's your connectivity? And what sort of discount do you imagine to get on products that people want? So that's very, very interesting. Um, the discount that you get on the product depends on actually the product that you're going after. So the longer the tail of the product you're after, the rarer, let's call it, the deeper the discount retailers are give, willing to give. So for argument's sake, Amazon voucher, 2% rebate. That's not very interesting because it's mass market. If you're actually going for something very, very long tail, for argument's sake, Jimmy True shoes, you're a woman, a wife, and Jimmy True shoes is something that you really, really want, but you can't afford, the rebate that you get for that saving objective can actually be as substantial as 12%. And the interesting fact is that I don't need to share the entire 12% with the customer. I can decide to give them 10% and that last 2% is mine. You see what I mean? So it's on that model. The longer the tail the objective is, the deeper the discount. So it really depends on the objective. Another thing to clarify, I'm not going to be starting up retail agreements with every retailer because that's not going to happen. It's by virtue of wholesalers of prepaid cards that it actually makes sense. So um, various company launches and flops have shown that unlike Americans, Brits are very conservative about the information that they share online. How are you going to convince your target usership base to sign up to your app and potentially give out sensitive information about their personal finances. So is it anonymized? Uh, do they actually enter the products that they've invested in, pension, savings, investments? How, how did you get around that? So there's various facets to the question you asked there. So one is on the aspects of the data being particularly sensitive, and you're absolutely right. Um, many, many of the applications that are out there, from Money Dashboard to Mint, they actually, uh, to, to help you optimize them, you have to share that kind of data. If you're not willing to share the data, there's no artificial engine that can ever help you. So the you're right, there's a certain leap of faith that has to be made in order for the, the engine to work. On the financial products, let's be careful because we're not going into financial advisory. This is very much on the assistance. It will answer a question on your finances, but it will never tell you which road to take. Primarily because the which road to take goes under prudential regulatory authority, and that's something that I'm not ready to do right now. This is only on the assistance. It's on telling you and answering the question, what's the number, what's the balance, uh, how much should I save for Christmas? It will answer the questions, but it will never tell you, like, look, you should do this. It won't do that. It will just answer the question. Uh, Neil, what's the one thing that you're after this evening? Um, contacts, uh, investment, where, as I say, we're raising funds right now. It's uh, £180,000 under SEIS, EIS. As I mentioned, we've got 100000 already uh, taken care of. So if anybody's in the angel investment space, by all means, come and talk to me. Feedback, contacts, that's really what I'm after. Thank you very much. Thank you.